couple of um, podcasts ago, you talk about the idea of becoming a container. Becoming a container. Okay. Yeah. So becoming a container. So you you meditate. Apologize, meditating. man. Most of the time, I don't remember half the stuff I say. So that's uh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I review it. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the context. Why? <laughs> so the con. Yeah. I, I forgot. Actually, I forgot the context too. But okay. the idea was that when you're meditating, you're supposed to become a, a container. So don't try to meditate. Set the conditions for meditation, and just let it oh, happen. Okay. Okay. That and makes become sense. the container, yeah. and then let it flow through you. Well, continue like a one black of hole type of like a black hole. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think you said black hole. Like just be a black hole and let the. Well, it's like sand, or, uh, there's many ways to look at this, but okay. Let's say you get a wooden bowl, right? And then you you take a wooden stick and you hit the bowl, it makes a sound, right? right? But if it's made of brass, if it's those Tibet prayer bowls, yeah. when you hit it, it goes gong. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So you said a container changes the frequency, right? Right. Which changes the energy, right? Right. The vibration, the energy, so. Well, we're the same. We're containers. So how, if you, when Qigong guys say build a container, that's one layer of what they mean of building the condition, right? So when I went through the process of um, the each one, right? For example, in Chinese medicine, in medical Qigong, there's many, many medical Qigong. One of it is called a six healing sound, where um, your kidneys, your liver, your spleen, your lungs, your heart, different internal organs, you make a different chanting sound to build a vibration to affect that particular organ. So if I were to go up to a chalkboard with uh, fingernails and go, you know that sound make you... Yeah. So it, it, but if someone play a really soothing music or song, then you... Cortisol you see how, drops. Yeah, 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 so sound directly affects your nervous system. So what they found out is certain sound affects your nervous system a certain way, like a sad song, a, a heavy metal music, a rap, someone scratching the chalkboard, all have different frequency which affects your psyche and your body and your nervous system differently, right? Right, yeah. So different sound affects you differently. Therefore, different sound affects your internal organs differently. That's one theory. And one entire Qigong system is based on that, the five elements Qigong system. So that's really cool. But what I found is it doesn't work. And I don't want to get in trouble saying this, but it goes back to the wooden bowl. If you got a wooden bowl and you hit the wooden bowl, the sound it makes compared to a Tibet prayer brass bowl, completely different, right? Right. If you were to go have a drum with a rubber skin on it and you hit the drum, it makes nice noise. But if that drum was made of paper, it will crash. So the material, the container is important. So through the years, I see people learn meditation like the six healing sounds with the internal organ we talk about. Right. And after they practice it, they go, Adam, it doesn't work. I'm like, well, of course it doesn't work. You have a paper container. Oh, that makes so without sense, building yeah. the container, you're wasting your time. And people don't want to tell you this, right? But um, of all the Qigong system in China, most of the top Qigong masters, when they ask, okay, if you only got one hour to train in Qigong, what would you do? Anonymously, they say post-training. You know why? Because it's the container. Because it builds the container, yeah. Because yeah. without the container, whatever system you throw at it, it's just not going to work. And they don't want to say this because no one wants to post train. Ah. It's better to sell iron shirts, you go, six healing sounds, you go, all these different Qigong cells, right? But if you go, hey, man, all we're going to do is post train. No, but people will quit. But that is the backbone. Without the container, I'm not saying it's the best, I'm saying it's a container. Without the container, all these sounds you throw at it is not going to work out. So the container is really important. And let me be very clear about, I'm strictly talking about Qigong, which is not saying, is it okay if I go into the definition? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm sorry. but for sure. Um, I'm trying to clarify this as best as possible man i apologize it's gonna take a bit okay so basically you have singung and then you have mengung singung there's no good translation of this would be the closest translation to this would be spiritual work i okay. hate that word because it's so loaded because i don't mean religion uh spiritual work energy chi that kind of no, stuff. not even yet. Not even, oh. So, okay, so let's just call it spiritual work, right? Okay. That's singgong. Try to remember that word. And then minggong would be uh, anything that betters your physical health. Right? Okay. So one's physical, one's spiritual. Now, if you look at the minggong, the physical stuff, there's two categories, moving and not moving. Not moving would be jamjong, which is post-training. 
In modern time, we think of it as a universal pulse, but in Taoism, there's over 200 postures and there's many styles of it. So it's a category of practice. It's not one style and it's not one thing. And then there's the movement, Minggong, which in ancient time, they call it Douyan or Daoyin, which is um, well, a modern interpretation of it people see would be uh, eight pieces of brake or Tai Chi. Um, those would be a popular system, right? Right. So... Minggong has moving and not moving, moving is Douyan, and not moving is Zhang right? All that would be considered Qigong. And that is a 1940s term made by the communist government. So when people say Qigong, and I say it too, it's only because it's popular on Google, so I, I use the word Qigong so people know what I'm talking about, but really it's not. That's a misnamer. Oh, that's really interesting, yeah. Yeah, but now if you look at Singgong, right? That's the spiritual work. It has moving and not moving, but in neither case at least it's sitting. And sitting in Chinese is da zhou. And there's many, 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 many styles of it. But no matter what style it is, it's based on two categories, doing and not doing. Doing with a very famous one that's concentrated in Taoism would be lo dan or internal alchemy. Very close to Kundalini Yoga, right? And then there's a non-doing practice, which has many, many lineage. The heaven mountain, sitting and forgetting, guarding the one, the nei yi, the lao zhu tradition the water tradition. So there's many, many, many traditions. Now, um, when you're talking about building a container, we're strictly talking about, for that conversation, the Minggong physical part of Zhang Zhong. And I'm saying without that, no matter what sound you throw at it, and all Qigong is based on sound, even if they're not making sound, it's internal vibration, right? right. No matter what sound you throw at it, it's not going to work. You don't have uh, a container. So if it's all Qigong doesn't work, I tried it. I'm like... What did you post train first? No, well, what about things that uh, that's not post training, like stretching, working out, things like that? That's that, still considered that goal. contributes to your container, right? Yeah, very external layer of container. Very external. Oh, okay, like well, you, you need yeah. it. Yeah, you can right? even shoot going all you want. You're not going to be a deadlift four hundred pounds, right? right? Right. And you can deadlift four hundred pounds, but it doesn't mean your nervous system's any good. Plenty of athletes have that's actually tons good, of problems. That's a good. Uh, that's a good thing because it's the nervous system that you mean by the mingong, right? Uh, nervous system is part of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you can be fit that. and not yeah. healthy and healthy and not fit. Oh, yeah. That's There's no history. top athletes in the world in the history of athletics that has lived to 100 years old. That's the truth, statistically. I just learned that recently. Wow. And there's no one that lives 100 years old that's highly athletic. So you get a guy that's good, that's super athletic, right? Like maybe he's a Hall of Famer in some sport, right? That guy's gonna, not going to live to 100. Then you get a, the, the people with the highest longevity in the world a few years ago, I'm not sure if it's still true now, it's in Okinawa. So you get the, one of those old grandma that's 120 years old. She can't deadlift 100 pounds. <laughs> so you can't measure people's health based on how fit they are, how many push-ups they can do. I mean, no, that's not what, the emphasis on Mingong is to make you live really long. It's not dedicated to you being an extreme athlete. So a lot of guys, I do a lot of Qigong. I must be very powerful. Well, you can take that and you can plug it into your internal martial art being powerful as hell. Yeah, sure. But that's not the idea. We're not trying to make you a super athlete, right? I know a lot of people don't want to hear this because they're trying to sell Qigong courses, shoot fireballs out of the palm or something. But that no, man. It's, it's, that's not the idea of Mingong. No one goes to Minggong and say, uh, I want to be a better basketball player. You learn Minggong, or nowadays they call it Qigong, so you can be healthier, healthier. so you can be happier. And you do Singgong to take it farther for two reasons. One, for, and I'm classical Taoist point of view, is right. for healing here. And especially nowadays, everyone's got anxiety, depression, exactly. Art, suicidal yeah. rate in Canada is skyrocketing. So you need that, right? That's considered a warm-up. <laughs> and because, that's why I think that was hilarious the way they lay things out is like what it, it totally when I first learned about it it freaked me out because is if you go by the ladder then the Mingong is not about athletics it's about longevity right right and then if you go to the Singong it's about emotional spiritual healing let's call it emotional healing but that is a preparatory phrase for making peace with death it's about death. As Carl Jung, the great psychologist, said, the first half of life is about developing your healthy ego. 
Learn how to make a living. Learn how to take care of family. Learn how to be a good brother. Learn how to be a good friend. Learn how to be a good husband. Learn how to be a good man. Take care of your wife. Raise your children right. Build your career. Competence, competence, competence. Ego, ego, ego. Healthy ego. Healthy. You need that so you can function, right? Second half of life, you said, is about making peace with death. About your, that's by midlife crisis. Because this, this is not going to solve that. And that will not solve this, right? There's a time and place for everything. Because look, when you're 50 or 60, your kids went to college. They left already. You're an empty nester. Your wife, maybe she's dead. Maybe you're together. It's not the same love affair. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just a friendship. You don't know. Your friends, a lot of them are starting to drop dead. That's just life. You get to that age. It's about you making Accepting. peace with immortality and, and death. And that's the highest rate of suicide in Canada after midlife crisis. People can't deal with that because it's, the education's not teaching you that. That's why psychology is awesome. Like Carl Jung's like, no, no, no. The first half of life, before 35, you're supposed to, don't worry about death. Work on getting a job. <laughs> Work on being a good husband, good this and good. Develop yourself, right? He goes, but the second half of life, dude, you don't want to be the old guy hitting on girls in a bar. You don't want to be the 60-year-old guy showing off his six pack and trying to buy a Ferrari. Like, that's gross. You don't want to be a 70-year-old guy picking fights and acting tough. That's disgusting. Yeah. That's over. Hey, man, your mortality, your legacy. You're going to die. Are you okay with that? You're going to die with grace. Well, not just with grace, but do you understand? You're going to die. It's over. It's not over, but you're going to die. And people can't deal with that. So yeah, they, like, they kill themselves in Canada. That's usually when uh, a lot of people... No, but that's... Let's circle them back. That's what Taoism's laying out. And then Carl Jung just kind of reinvented the wheel and wrote a billion books about it and then become the founding father of psychology. But (laughs) Taoism's like, yeah, okay, first longevity, emotional healing, death, spirituality, making peace with whatever is up there. Okay, why? Which is very different than Buddhism. Buddhism's like, let's start here. Like, they don't do Mingong, right? They don't. At, at they all. don't. They only do Sengong traditionally. That's why you see a lot of Tibet high-level monks. They're meditating all day, 24 hours a day, and they're amazing people. Like, the Olympians of meditation, right? But when you see them walk, they need a wheelchair. They're like, oh. they don't. They can't even do one push-up. That's an example of only working on Sengong, but not Mingong. But then you got people that only work on Mingong, the Qigong stuff, but they don't do that sitting spiritual stuff. So they, they post train all day, they're healthy, they'll live till they're 80, 100 years old. They're still dickheads. They still pick fights. They're still anxious. They're still depressed. Yeah. They still, still try to have something to prove, right? They still got something to prove. They're still afraid of death. They haven't done the whole thing. So Taoism is kind of funny. It's like, no, you walk right, learn longevity. Because if you don't live long, you're not meditating, you're going to die way before you get anywhere. Longevity. Eat right, sleep right, do your qigong, build a container, blah, blah, blah. Emotional healing. We all got trauma. Deal with it. Okay. What do you live for? What do you die for? What happens? How do you make peace with all that? So it's laid out. And then later on, it turned into a religion. Oof. And all that went away. They just started doing rituals and praying. And they had no idea how to practice these things that the ancestors invented, right? systematic progressive drills not talk not philosophy not rituals like they turn it into a menu instead not of eating the, yeah. the chicken they're starting to just look at the menu we're back to the chicken and the menu yeah that'll never go away man <laughs> but yeah i hope when the way i don't know if i did an okay job but the way i laid it up that was what they were trying to get at right but one thing before the other if you're like you know you're like 20 worrying about this it's like no worry about getting a job being a developed social skill. Like, you, you, like Carl Jung said, you're supposed to develop a healthy ego in the beginning. What You know what I mean? Make mistakes, learn yeah. from them, all that stuff. But you got to know when to stop. At a certain age, it's like, okay, that's over. Now let's, let's work on this. But if you haven't gotten the foundation, well, how are you going to work on this? The whole thing will crumble. Does that help with the container? <laughs> it's like, yeah. that's the no, idea no, of the container. No, it makes perfect sense like, now, yeah. Look, you got it. Placing in something, so. And it applies to so many things. Yeah. Eh? But the internal martial art, and I'm not knocking it because I'm a martial artist and I love martial art. Of that progression I just said, they took the Mingung part and ran with it so they can pick fights and attack people and develop ways of killing people and turn it all romantic later on that they're saints. But no, 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 no. They didn't do the rest of the part, right? 
So you get it. To me, you got to do the whole thing. It's a full circle. Without Ming and Sing, if you only do the top part, you'd be the guy that can't even walk down the street and you're screwed. With with just the bottom part, you haven't really. You're still gonna be angry and trying to prove something. Yeah. You, all the all the human suffering you carry, you continue to carry with you. But it's not black and white. Professor Jung said, when you do Ming Gong, it's seventy percent developing your Ming, but thirty percent your Sing. If you do Sing Gong, it's seventy percent developing your Sing, and thirty percent your Ming. It always carries the black with the dot of white and the white dot of black. So even if you do just pure post training, you don't care about spirituality, you'll still get thirty percent of that benefit, anyways. And if you do sitting, even though you, you can't walk, you're still better off than most people. You still get some energetic stuff compared to most older people that's really not doing too well, right? Right. But then if you drop it even lower, forget about thousands and gong, gong, then you should run, lift weights, do your cardio. That's important too. So if you look at have some friends, con- yeah. yeah, container, have some friends. <laughs> <laughs> all, Social circle, all this stuff. Right? So yeah. it's a hermit tradition, though. Oh, it's like okay, man. This is how Taoist teachers in the old days. I wish they still do that now. But you go to them, you're like, hey, I want to learn uh, blah blah blah. But assuming that somehow you get accepted as a disciple, which is really rare, they'll be like, all right, do this. And so you lay, they layer it out like the way I just laid it out, but much better than that, the job I can do. And they go, okay, we're going to do this part, right? And you go, okay, this is what you do. You get it. Goes, yeah, okay, now go away. <laughs> That's how it is. Then, then. So you go away and you practice for a year, two years, three years, whatever long it takes for you to think you got it. Then you go back and you go, hey, check this out. And the guy's like, ah, no, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> fix that. Go away. And then you go away and you try your best to fix this thing. And then you, you go back and then... Maybe after a few loops, you, the guy goes, you got it. All right, next thing. Now you do this one, this new one. Go, go away. And then that's how it was. No singer, no support group, no community, no one holding your hand, no compliments. So that's what Taoism historically had the lowest assess rate. They had the lowest amount of students. On top of that, there was a rule. One guy was only allowed to teach one guy. Not two, not three. It's like Star Wars. Like, there's a master and there's a apprentice. Yeah, that's like so, the you're not Sith rule. Yeah, <laughs> like you're not supposed to take on more than one guy. That was the rule to wow. ensure high quality. I'm like, what's the... No wonder that when they were complaining about they couldn't get a lot of success in their clan or their lineage. It's like, what did you expect was going to happen? Yeah, no support group. This is... They're like elitist. This is only for people that are self-reliant. And number two, you only allowed to have one student. It's like, I'm, su- I'm really surprised it survived 7,000 years. Yeah, wow. But versus other systems, might be like one teacher, 500 people in a temple. A lot of hand-holding, a lot of support. You don't have to figure things out for yourself. I will tell you the answer. No going away. And much higher success rate. You're still going to get 90% of people not doing that well, but now you have 10 guys that do well versus just one guy that do well. And one versus 10 after a few centuries, right? So history is really hilarious. But I learned under that tradition, not because I wanted to, but unfortunately, like Professor John was like, hey, Adam, do this. I was like, and? And go away. (laughs) <laughs> so I, he kicks me out. <laughs> I, I work on it after a few years. My like, Sifu, what's your... And he's just like, <laughs> no, you idiot, do this. Go, and then, and, no, and, go away. He kicks me out. And, then, and eventually he's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Now, next. And then I'm like, next, I thought I got it. He goes, no, no, this stuff doesn't end, man. It's... And then I'll tell you more stories about him another time. Oh, yeah. He's a funny, I love that guy. He's just hilarious. But yeah, well, really cool, man. Okay. Oh, yeah, guys. Um, we're very flattered since this podcast came out in the last few conference reports. Chris has been telling me there's a lot of requests and emails about how can you learn this. And I've already said in the last few episodes and also in my articles and ebooks that you, I recommend it quite a few teachers. But you're still asking, you know, and I feel flattered you're asking if you can train this with me. So we are going to be doing a workshop retreat, seminar, whatever you want to call it. We don't know when and where yet. We're going to be planning it. So go to the description of this video, and Chris will put a link below 
um, where you can look at our live events and you can go in there and give us your feedback. Basically, we try to get more feedback of where people want this to happen, when to happen, and we might be able to make it happen. Yeah. All right. If yeah. anything, you could also just go to the website and there's right yeah. on the homepage. It's a button there. Amchankungfu.com. And then you can put a description below. Yeah. All right, guys. See you next time. See you next time. Have guys. a good night.